Hey, and welcome back to another InScape video. In this video, we're going to look at more lighting properties and what we can do specifically with lights and light bulbs to make them look a little more realistic or maybe just better quality. So if you happen to learn something or just like the video, demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. Also consider changing the phase of that subscribe button to existing. That also helps me out so, so much. So what I've got here, I've built out a little basic room here out of a default template in Revit. I've downloaded these three separate lights. They're equally extravagant in different ways, but we've got some different properties that we need to work with as far as light bulbs and lights and getting the correct model lights out of Revit to show up in Inkscape how we want it to. Now, default in Inkscape is that you've got auto exposure on. And if you've heard any of my previous videos, um, check out the cards now where I have done an advanced lighting in Inkscape. So check that out for sure because that's gonna give you really everything you need to know about these lights as far as the lighting properties in Inkscape that you need to know. But getting into this now, we wanna look at each one of these lights individually and how we can start to address the light bulbs, the light source and all of that on the Revit side to see what it might look like and what, what we can make it look like in Inkscape to improve the quality. Now, like I said before, we've got this on auto exposure, which is just fine, but if you've heard my rant on auto exposure, what this is doing is it's eliminating the light values of my lights in the scene and just evening it all out. It's giving you a balanced level of light from dark to light in your scene, regardless of what you're looking at. It's going to update every time you move in Inkscape. So that's, that's again, that's fine. But we want what we want to do is get the light properties for each individual light correct in Revit so we can turn auto exposure off and manipulate those specifically in Inkscape later on. So I, what I'm going to do now is actually turn auto exposure off because this is going to give us the true light values of our lights in Inkscape. So when we go back to Inkscape, we can see, you know, these are the actual light values of the models themselves and what we're getting when they come into Inkscape. Now, the, the light on the left, you basically can't see, and that's because the light is essentially off. There's no source. There's no light any anywhere on it. The second one, it, we've, we do see some sources lit up, but I don't see, like, any light being em emitted. And whereas this last one, we, we see a light being emitted, and, like, I see light here at the top, which doesn't make sense to me, but none of these light sources are actually lit up at all. Now, when we further investigate this light here at the left, you know, there's a light bulb there but it's clearly not on, it's not doing anything for us. Again, these are just, they're lit up like they're lights, but, and there might be some light in here, but in the room, not so much. And whereas here, I, you know, these should all be lit up in my opinion, that's kind of the point of this. And then where's this light coming from here? So this is all going to give us what we need to, to go into these models individually and decide what can we do and how can we make this better? So I'm gonna go back to Revit back in Revit now, and we're gonna go look at these lights individually. So I'm gonna click on this light, edit the family, and we're gonna see the light. And at that point, what we're gonna try and do is update the light source. Uh, we might need to add some material parameters depending on the light and everything. Well, if you look at it here, we actually see the, the yellow there is a light source. So this is actually a light, and it's emitting light, but it's really hard to see. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go in and edit this group, which is actually that group there. And of course, this is going to vary based on every family, but the principles that we do as far as adding material parameters and the materials we add to the bulbs and specific things like that, that can be used throughout any light that you have in your project. And in fact, I'm going to make the same material for the light source. I'm going to use on all three lights. So here we are, we're in the light bulb. And if I just select it there, I can see the light bulb. Okay, great. I wanna select this bulb and I can see that the material is, it's set to this bulb material. That's fine, we're good with that. And so that tells me we can change that on the, on the Revit side. Okay, and now we also have this light source here, which the light source is actually within the, the family itself and not within that separate model group. So I can just tab to that light source, or I can select it this way. And so I see my light source. And generally speaking, I, you, know, you don't need to update 
this information because the light source is going to do what it needs to do. The, the main thing that we want to do is determine what the light is creating, like the shape of the light, in this case, the, the light source definition. Is it a round? Is it rectangle? Is it spherical? Anything like that. And so this one's pretty good, and I'm happy with this, except that it wasn't producing light or it wasn't producing enough light. So what can we do about that? Well, in this case, I would probably not mess with any of this at all because, again, we're happy with this. It's the light bulb. I'm going to hit OK there and come into my parameters. And if I come into light intensity, this is, this is all information I don't really want to get into and I'm not going to, but if you want to make sure things are consistent, you're going to have to use the same wattage for lights or same setting for all these lights that you use in all your lights. So again, I'm not really going to mess with this. I'm going to base this based on materials and we're going to achieve this, the look at least more through materials, but we want to also make sure that the light itself is doing the lighting. <laughs> so the light source symbol size, this doesn't actually impact anything, but for the sake of you know, what I think. I, I want to put this higher, and this is just for me, and you can see what this will do. Once I hit OK, we're going to see that the size of that light source is now larger, and like there it is. And I, I just want to do this to know that the light source is extending beyond the light bulb itself to see where this light is going. So, okay, and so this is actually pretty good, and you might say that we've done absolutely nothing in this family, and we haven't, but we're going to do that on the Revit side. So I'm going to load this into my project. Great. I'll go ahead and save it. And once I save it, I'm now going to override it, but I want to change the material of the light bulb itself to give us the illusion, at least that the light bulb is lit up, but then we need to actually address the light source itself. So again, let's click on the model. Let's edit the type here. And now I've got my light bulb here. And what I've done is actually change all of the, the framing materials or anything like that that are not the bulb of all three of these lights, lights to a specific dark metal that I've just threw together. So if we're looking at the light bulb, uh, one easy thing that you can do is you can simply create a new material. And I'll, I'll do this with you. Create a new material. And I'm going to name this light bulb maybe. Now let's go to our appearance. And this is just a quick way if you want to get an easy light source that's kind of out of the box and pretty simple. We need to come up here and replace our asset. And this is going to open all of our assets. We're going to go to the appearance library and we can just type in emissive. E-M-I is enough. And there's lots that we can start to choose from. There's a frosted bulb. We can come down here. There's an LED bulbs. And if you've seen one of my previous materials videos, you'll notice the little triangle with the exclamation point there that's orange it's telling you that's an older version of materials seen in Revit 2018 and earlier and so I would have tried to avoid those because you're going to get higher quality looking materials from all the others that do not have this kind of legacy icon as they would call it so I want an LED light and you know I would say this first one is just fine so I can simply add that or replace that asset in my material with these arrows here at the right. I can see there it is. Now I've actually gone to the trouble of doing this before and I have this light source which I believe is the exact same and I can start to come into the emissivity, emissiveness, however you want to call it, and then we can start to change the brightness here or the color itself if you want to make it a red light bulb this is where you would change it and so I'm fine with white and that's going to be fine. So I'm going to change this material to this light source or light bulb, whichever one you want to make. There we go. I'm going to hit OK. Let's now go back to Inkscape because Inkscape has now been updated. And now we can see that looks a little more realistic. I can start to see my light bulb and it's kind of nice. Like it, it's clearly a light bulb. Now, the problem I have is that my light source or the light bulb is not really emitting light even though it's glowing. The light bulb itself is glowing. Like that looks pretty good as far as the light bulb goes. But I want to, I want to see this pattern on the walls. That's kind of the point here. I want to see this light being cast beyond just the light bulb itself. So that's where we're going to have to start to get into some of the properties of the light source. And we're going to do that within the properties down here. And Really, most of the time, I don't care about this because most of the time this isn't a problem. But I'm going to come down here and I'm going to 
put this at 30 watts and see what happens. Let's go back into Inkscape, and you notice there's not much, but if you look at the top, we can <laughs> we can start to see some of this pattern showing up, and that tells me that our light is our light source is now brighter, not the bulb, not the material, but the light source itself, which is what we're going after. Now, this is one of my big knocks on Revit and the lights and everything. And it might be that because I have my light source within this glass material or something like that, that that's causing a problem. I can't necessarily tell you that for sure. But what I've seen is that a lot of times I'm going to have to come in here and really jack up that wattage. And I don't like doing that, but it's just, it's, it's light dependent. So at this time, let's put it at 60 watts and let's see what happens at this point. Hit OK, go back to Inkscape. And we can see, there we go. I mean, clearly, that is, that's doing exactly what we want because we can see the, the pattern of the outline really everywhere. We can see it there on the floor. It's not too bright, not too crazy, but we can see it there, and that's kind of what we're going for. So that light looks pretty good. Now, again, I don't like changing the wattage and doing all that because it's probably a specific type of, of light. Now, for experimental purposes, let's go ahead and move that light source out of the light bulb itself and see if we get like a dramatically different look and probably dramatic, dramatically brighter look because that light source was is no longer inside the light bulb. Let's go ahead and do that now. We'll go back into edit the family. I'll then go to probably a front view and then we'll be able to pull that light source down. So yeah, let's go to the front view here. We've got our light source there, and I'll move it just slightly out to where the center is out of the light bulb itself. You can see right there, the light, the light source is just outside the light bulb there. So that's good. Let's go ahead and load this back into our project. I'll save it. And we might not like the way this looks at all. It might be too bright or whatever, and we might have to change that back. Okay, so now let's go back to Inkscape now that it's been reloaded in and updated. And we can see what this looks like from an Inkscape view. So there we go. I, you know, the light didn't really change. It's just that my angle changed. And so that kind of tells me that it wasn't so much that the light source being in the light bulb was a problem. So I'm actually going to undo that because I really want that light source to be centered within the light bulb. So let's just undo that. And that's, that's, that's that. So there we are. We're, we've finished one. And now let's look at the second one. This one's going to be a little more complicated, a little more different. And we're going to have to do a little more than we did in that first one. So I'll go ahead and edit the family. And we can start to see what we might need to do with this. Again, all these are models are downloaded from the internet. They're built in different ways. I have my own opinion as to why <laughs> I don't like the way they're modeled. And I might get into some of that in this video, might not. But clearly, we can see there's something going on here that is incorrect. So what we, <laughs> what we see is one single light source that is lighting the entire scene based on this light. Whereas if you remember based on the light itself, we have these individual lights at the end of all the toilet plungers. And to me, that's, it's incorrect to have this light source be there. We should have a light source for every single one of these lights if it were to be modeled correctly. Now that's just my opinion, but there's nothing else that I can do but to say that that's the reason why it looks a little weird. So I'll just click on one of these toilet plungers and we need to actually make sure we have the light source showing up within this toilet plunger, within the light bulb there, because that's really where it belongs. So there's two ways we could do this. We can simply place this light source within the group, and it would then populate everywhere. And that would work great if we had one type of light with all of in, in this entire light, light fixture. Now the problem is you can see we have two. We've got the smaller ones and these larger ones. And we want a light source at each one of them, obviously. So how would we go about doing that? Well, so we're okay to place this light source within the model group of one of them, but we're going to have to actually make a separate family with, the, with its own light source, load that into this, and replace that so we can start to see those light sources everywhere. So what we need to do now is create a family that is just this light bulb. And it's going to have its own light source, and we're going to need to make some parameters in there so we could change the size to account for the smaller and the larger light bulb here. So let's go ahead and go to File, New Family. You can make this a lot of different types of families, but just to keep things simple, let's go to Generic Model, hit OK. Let's go ahead and draw a revolve because we want this to be a perfect circle. 
I'll go ahead and just draw a circle here. It doesn't matter the size. We're going to change this in a second. Let's go ahead and we'll add this dimension and then make this a new parameter. We'll go ahead and make it an instance parameter and we'll call this radius. Okay, there's our radius. And we'll draw our axis line, make it there. I need to make sure and have my, have this only be a half circle. I'll go ahead and cut my circle there and then trim it together so I've got just my half circle. There we go, we got our half. I will complete the sketch, there we go. And so now we have our circle. Let's go ahead and take care of our material parameter. So I'm gonna click this box there, create a new material parameter, let's call this light bulb. And we want this to be a type because we want them all to look the same. Hit OK. Hit OK again. There we go. Now, to make it a light source and to add a light source, let's come up here to the family categories and parameters. And let's change this from generic model to light fixture, lighting fixtures. And then let's check light source. So we have a light source. I'll hit OK. Yeah, yeah, the light source is in whatever. It's in, in solid geometry. That's fine. So there we go. And so let's go ahead and change our light source there the light source definition to round a point that looks good hit okay there we go that's fine and then honestly it looks like this is free floating so we want to kind of lock this down in some way so i'm just in a plan view and you can do this really in any view but you're using these reference planes and then locking this in place and then using this reference plane locking that in place there we go now we have this light centered in place and i can go to all these different views and see the different lights right there it looks great i'm gonna go ahead and save this and we're just gonna save this as light bulb round that works i will hit okay there we go and then let's go ahead and load this into our light fixture family and there we go i can start to place this really wherever i want cool so at this point i don't need this light source let's go up here to again our families our family category and parameters and then turn the light source off Okay, that works. And again, I'm now going to select this single model group. Let's go ahead and isolate this in view with the sunglasses, isolate element. So there we go, we've got everything we need. And now at this point, we'll go back to component and then dump our light in there. And so like, it's not in the right place, so we'll deal with that in a second. So let's go ahead and I'm going to make sure we're editing the family, there we go. Let's go ahead and add this component to the family like that. And then I'm going to make sure I have the radius right. So let's go ahead and see what this is. It looks like it's an inch. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just delete this and make sure that I choose this light source and then come down to where our radius is and make that one inch. So there's our one inch. And now, of course, the light source is absurd. And you can change this if you want. And I would kind of recommend it just for display purposes. So let's go back into the family, edit this up a bit. We can go ahead and click that there, go into our parameters. And we can change the light source symbol size to maybe just, you know, four inches. That's fine. Of course, that's not big enough for what we're looking at here. But when we go into our project, or into our light source, it will be all the same. And you'll notice it did not update here. So we need to actually go into the properties, type properties of it here. And we can change that light symbol size to, again, our four inches. To make sure that looks good, we'll hit apply. That looks fine. We can start to see what it's doing, where it is, looks good. While I'm in edit type, we can go ahead and add our material from our light bulbs. And because it's a nested family, we have to take that parameter in our nested family and then put it into this family so we can reference it from our project. It's nested, so it's got tiers that we need to work our way down and pull our parameters down to each level. So we'll go ahead and make a new material. And I can just actually apply this to lamp material because that's fine. We're essentially replacing all the lamps and that's fine. So there's our lamp right there. And now I need to get this in the right place. <laughs> Now, how will I do that? Well, let's go to a top view. We need to basically work in different work planes to achieve this. So I'm going to move this now from this point all the way over here. And again, it's not going to be right in every work plane. So let's now come over here and now move it up. 
and I can start to get it pretty close to where it needs to be. And I know we're getting close in here now. Make it look, make the center line along that point there. I will slowly rotate around and make sure that everything looks like it's in the right place. It honestly does look pretty good. We're pretty close, if not already there. If I look straight on, yeah, it's not quite there, so I can start to adjust this slightly this way, right there. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. That looks pretty good. It's not bleeding out the back, I don't think, but for just for the sake of that, I'm going to come over here and make sure that it's not coming out the back. This looks like it might have been coming out the back slightly. There we go. So that looks pretty good. So I'll hit finish. There we go. And now we can see we've got all these lights everywhere. And let's go ahead and reset. And there we go. And this looks a bit weird. You might say, well, there's like two light sources within that one model group. Well, because of the way this family was built, this, <laughs> this is actually the same model group, but because it's in a different place, it's referencing that light source in a different place. Now, I cannot necessarily say why that is the case, but nonetheless, we'll deal with this. So I've got all of these looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and I'm going to actually change. So there's, if I look at all these different model groups, there's three different flowers here that we're working with. So let's go ahead and change what we see here, these floaters. Let's go ahead and change those to a different flower. So let's change that from flower three to flower two. That's fine. Now we need to go update flower two. And you can see why, you know, it. all of these should be the same group. I don't know what the difference is. There is no difference in my opinion. So that's just poor modeling from my understanding. If there's different links or something, there's a better way to do that. But I'm not knocking the modeling, but we have to deal with it. And that's part of the problem here. We have to deal with this. So let's edit this group. I'm going to isolate all this again. We're going to basically do the same thing that we just did, adding in that, that light source. So again, let's go to a top view and make this look right. Drag it closer to where it needs to be. Again, I need to make sure that my radius is one inch. And if you want, to, if you want that to be the default, depending on what you want the default to be, you need to change that in the family itself. So right now we are working within the, you know, the family itself, but not within this actual family, the light bulb family. So you have to change it in the light bulb family so it ref would reflect on the other families that you loaded in.
So there we go. <laughs> this was a completely ridiculous process, and I hope you wouldn't have to go through something like this. But again, this is all based on how the model was created with all these different model groups. I wish it were just a, like two model groups to fix this and be done and be easier, but it wasn't. Nonetheless, it's all done. And now we have for every light bulb, we have its own source, but we're using the exact same light bulb family to achieve this. And that's perfect. So what I'll do at this point is make sure that in our parameters, we have our light material set up and there it is. We've got that. As soon as I click on any one of these light bulbs, I also want to see it there. Yep. I have applied that. So that looks good. I'm going to save this, of course. Now going to load this into my project, overwrite it. There we go. And before we go and look at it in Inkscape, I want to actually change that bulb material to that same bulb material we used for the first one to get that nice glow and then have it be consistent. We don't want it to just look, you know, this bulb looks different than that one or this fixture looks different than that one unless you're going for that specifically. In this case, I'm not. Let's go ahead and save this as well. Now let's click on this. We'll go ahead and change this material to our source, our light source. There it is. Hit OK. Now let's go check this out on Inkscape. It might be completely too bright. We'll have to check on that based on the number of lights we do have. So there it is in Inkscape. Honestly, it looks pretty good. We've got that nice, consistent glow between all of our lights, our actual light bulbs there. It really is looking pretty good. And we're achieving that effect of all of these being lit up correctly. And we're seeing that it is consistent. And, you know, I've got a proper amount of light that is being emitted by that light fiction. It looks pretty good. So finally, let's move on to this third one. I'm hoping this is much easier and that this is built much easier, but we're going to go ahead and have to look nonetheless. Let's go back to Revit and check it out. So I'll go into Revit and edit this family. And once we're in the family, we can see, well, we don't have a light source showing. So let's make sure we actually have one showing. We have a light source showing. Now let's go into our visibility graphics. And then there's our light source. Let's just turn that on. Okay, well, <laughs> hmm. This, there, there's something here. <laughs> and so what is this? I'm going to click on this light source. And it's actually more than just that. It, this is this whole chandelier family. So I'm actually going to undo what I just did in revealing all of those. And we're going to actually go into this chandelier family. So again, this is a lot of times when you download commercial products, they they're somehow very happy with nesting multiple families within one another. And obviously this works, but it's just more tedious if you need to edit. So like this whole chandelier is in another nested family. Okay, not a huge deal, but nonetheless, here we are. So now let's go ahead and again, make sure we've got our light source. Yep, we've got a light source. Let's turn it on. And we're probably going to see these ridiculous things now. Now, what are these? Well, <laughs> again, we're looking at another instance of a nested family. So each one of these, in fact, is a nested family. And I'm not happy about that either because it's another layer, but we can start to address it from there. So here we go. We click on this light source and it is actually its own light fixture also. <laughs> You're going to think this is like completely stupid and ridiculous, but it, it is. So it is, but it isn't. And you'll see why it's not here in just a second. So I'm going to click on this. And so you'll see this is a light fixture. It's lamp S and all of these are lamp S. And so this is really nice because I can edit amp lamp S and then again, lamp L with the same. And we can see that it's going to populate throughout. So let's click on S here, edit the family. So here we are. We're basically at the base here. We're at what we need. And so let's click on this. And this happens to be what I believe it's an IES family. Yes, yeah, photometric web. So every time you see a photometric web used here, you'll be able to find this information in the parameters. So this is gonna, you're going to get this photometric web file in the photometrics. Mm -hmm. And this is going to just be a default. And so this file is associated to this specific light from this manufacturer. This is really nice. So this is telling me that this is the type of light that will be emitted from this light source. And that's great. So like, I don't need to mess with that at all because like, it's right. It's the light that we want. Now I'm actually for visibility sake, going to hide the light source. Once I do that, we now want to apply this same bulb material to this actual bulb. So let's confirm that we have this material. So we've got lens. That's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and rename that here. 
just so I know what it is. I'll rename that to bulb and I, it's a shared parameter, so that's okay. We're good with the way it is. I don't need to mess with that. And my guess is that this is the cylinder finish is the exact same there. Okay, get the cylinder finish. Good, that's fine. So I didn't make any changes and that's fine. So that's good there. I, I'm just going to make sure that this other is the exact same way. There we go, we've got this other IES file. Yep, there's the file there. I can just simply close this. So now that I'm in this file, I can close these. I can basically close all the way down to the point where we have what we need to. But I do want to show you this. And we you notice that we saw that weird light at the top of the fixture. So this is the top of the fixture. I'm going to actually, now that I'm in the base fixture again, I'm going to turn the light source on. And we can see it here. So <laughs> for some reason, there is a light source that is placed right here. And that's also in addition to all the lights that we have there. Now, I, this is incorrect, so my guess is we could come in here and turn the light source off in this main model and have that turn off. Look, there we go. So now the light will no longer be at the top of the fixture, which doesn't make sense, and we'll actually have that light correctly around the bulbs. So I'm going to load this in. I'm going to save it, and okay. So you'll notice, I, of all the layers that were there, the only thing that we actually did was turn the light source off in that main fixture to remove the light source from the top of the fixture in a weird place that it wouldn't naturally be. So let's come in here now and change these, this material to the bulb material, and we should be pretty good. So I'm gonna go to the lens there, and let's go ahead and change that to my light source. I'll, turn, I'll search light, and we can come in here to light source there. Okay, that looks good. Now. Clear lens, I'm actually gonna go ahead and change this myself. I can keep this, but now I wanna to go to appearance, replace asset, and again, I'm gonna just search glass. I'm gonna look for one that's not a legacy, that's just a nice clear glass. And so these are all legacy, and there happens to be a nice glass clear right there. Let's go ahead and replace that. Okay, okay, there we go. Now, my guess is this is gonna look a lot better in Enscape. So let's go check that out. Look at that, that looks pretty good, it looks pretty good. I, I like it so much. It's cool. It's got the different lights and, you know, honestly, you could change the color of the lights individually if you needed to. You'd have to do that in the family and make those instance parameters. You could change it all through the material if you wanted to now. You could change the, you know, the glass color, anything that you wanted to, but that looks pretty good. And honestly, I'm pretty happy with the way this is looking in Enscape, but now we can finally make some final tweaks and look at all the different options that we can with Enscape and the light settings. So let's go to Enscape and I will go to my visual settings and let's go ahead and look at the, the ambient brightness. That's, that's fine, really fine the way it is. Uh, again, make sure your auto exposure is off because if I turn auto exposure on, you know, it's gonna be really bright just because of where I'm looking. And if I start to move somewhere else, it's gonna be adjusted for that. So I'm gonna go back to this place, turn auto exposure off. Now let's let's start to look at our artificial light brightness. So I can, of course, change this if I want and make it really bright. And so the problem with this now is that I can bring it up and let's say I want this light on the left to look much brighter. If I wanna do this with artificial light brightness, I'm gonna to have to change some of the values. I'm gonna to have to either instead change the value of this first light to be brighter with that wattage setting or reduce that with the other lights. So honestly, it does look pretty good where it is now. I can bring it up some more if I wanna lighten them up just a bit. I can come in here to highlights and up the highlights if I want, the shadows if I want to make that more dramatic if I want to. But honestly, it does look pretty good in where it is. Further, you can make more settings, more changes if you want. This is where I might add a vignette, make this look a little more specific to what we're trying to look at, in this case, the light fixtures. So really, that's going to do it for this tutorial. We looked at all these three different lights, what we really needed to do to take it from something kind of boring that was out of the box and just didn't have any light sources, didn't look all that great. And we added light sources to all these individual lights, made parameters for the materials, and apply those materials so they would actually glow and look like a light that is appealing and something that you would like to look at. So that will do it for this video. If you happen to learn something, you know, maybe demolish that like button. It tells me that you learned something. Also consider, 
Also, consider changing the phase of that subscribe button to existing. And let me know if you have anything else that you want to know about Enscape as far as lighting. If there's something specific that you encountered that you have a question about, I'd be happy to answer that in a video. Hope you have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.